training is, is extremely rigorous and we put them under a significant amount of pressure because we can't obviously replicate the crowds that there are going to be when they go out to the championships. And a lot of the kids do say they find the training tougher than the actual fortnight. There's probably about 700 or 800 who apply and we take approximately 250. It's really tough, I mean it's very tough to get in. Um, the discipline is, is everything and they, they learn that pretty quickly. If they don't come up to the standard we're looking for, unfortunately they don't make it to the end. I am very proud about being here and being able to almost represent my school as a ball boy in such a massive scale as Wimbledon. It's the core skills of feeding and rolling. The rolling is probably the most important thing and we do tell them at the start that if they cannot roll a ball flat and fast, they're unlikely to be there at the end of the programme. So the feeding is where, where the players at the service end and you see the BBGs at the back of the court are called bases. So when they put their arm up in the air, it's very much as if there's a wall, two walls between them and their arm goes straight up, okay, so not up the front or, the, or anywhere up the side. So it goes straight up and it's in a nice straight line. And when they feed the ball, the arm is perfectly straight. We spend a lot of time making sure that they're, they're not, their eyes are not drifting around and looking at elsewhere and what's happening because, you know, clearly teenagers, there's really famous people on the court, lots of people in the crowd, lots of stuff going on, but all they're focusing on is what they're doing on the court. Possibly the unsung heroes of, of Wimbledon because if we're unnoticed, then for me that's a huge success. Garbinia Muguruza has emerged from the shadows and is now the number two ranked female tennis player in the world. Earlier this month, she stunned Serena Williams and won her first Grand Slam title at the French Open. Well, I learned from all the matches I played against her and I learned that if you want something, you gotta really go for it. Try to put the, the nerves side so that's what I tried to do go for the match and uh, believe that I could be the champion. 22 year old's rapid rise up the ranking has caught the attention of some of the game's greats. Garbina Muguruza is the real deal. We've been looking for a player, a, a younger player to come along because we know Serena and Venus are not going to be around forever. She's very strong, very powerful, has a huge serve, big ground strokes off both sides, very impressive. Obviously, got to the finals of Wimbledon. Last year, tennis fans started learning the Spaniard's name when she advanced to the Wimbledon final. It remains one of the highlights of the young star's career. It's something that you work all your life to be there at that moment. I think it's very special. Not so many people can go out there and feel that kind of feeling, you know, like everybody quiet and you are the one who's playing. So, for sure, this one is the best. This year, the world number two returns to the All England Club, not as a quiet outsider, but as the one to beat. And definitely in the future she can be number one. So it would be good for Spain and good, you know, good for Muguruza and I'm very happy to be able to see her playing and doing so well. I have a lot of motivation to, to be there. You know, tennis is what I've always wanted to do, so it's my dream to be on top. That's what I work every day and it was my dream, so I really wanted to achieve it. was the first player in history to win five Wimbledon singles titles in a row. He had many memorable moments at the All England Club, but there's one match in particular that many have found hard to forget. The 1980 Wimbledon final against John McEnroe. 15, 14. Do you look back at those memories fondly? I think uh, a lot of people all around the world appreciate that final and they say they knew exactly where they were sitting watching the final. Mm. But even when I speak to John too, he sometimes we get together and the, the, the thing is that we both remember every single point. Really? Yes. <laughs> I think that's how it meant a lot for both of us. I mean for me, I came out as a winner. I mean even if he, he lost that, that match, but like he said uh, for so many years and I, I think the same, I think he got a lot of respect from the world, from the people, 
uh, from spectators, from media, from everyone, uh, how <laughs> he behaved and uh, how he played that particular match. Well. Yeah, it's an interesting about respect, but it's, it's been said, and I think it's, there's a fair amount of truth in this, that John McEnroe doesn't respect anybody on the court except Bjorn Borg. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a bit of truth to that. I mean, Mac, I always thought, he, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't care, I'm going to kill you, but with you, he had some respect to that. It, you, still, you still communicate and have a, have yes, a friendship? Yes, uh, <laughs> I know he respects me, because in the beginning when we started to play, like, uh, our first three, four matches, uh, he felt like I was not a bad guy. It was more like I wanted to help him in certain ways because in certain ways he, uh, he misbehaved or, didn't, or he didn't know how, how to act or how to behave or what to do. And that was not really his fault. He was coming into tennis and he was this, this guy. But then I, I thought he was learning a lot of positive things. And he felt that I wanted to help him with those kind of things. So I think that's why he always respected me as, not as a player, but even as a person. I live in London, so I get the chance to go back to the All England Club regularly, but what's it like for you to go back? Yeah, I think Wimbledon always meant something special for me. I mean, it's always been, I think, a tournament that uh, most of the player, or, mo or maybe every player in the world, has a dream about. When there is some mystical thing about it, it, isn't it? it is mystical, and <laughs> with the tradition. When you walk into those gates in, in Wimbledon, it's like it's mystic. It, yeah. It's it's yeah. mysterious the whole thing. But all 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 tennis players been in the past and even in the future. The dream is to win Wimbledon. I was very successful and I won five times, I was in the final and always have good memories, positive things, positive vibes about Wimbledon. I love that tournament. Look at this guy. Oh, look. Our morning spent reminiscing about our favourite Wimbledon memories was drawing to a close. But I couldn't let Bjorn go without wishing him a happy birthday. When I came... 60 or so, I can imagine. It's, it's... It's, it's, it's a big number anyway, but um, we're not going to have a big uh, party, just with, um, with 500 people. No, I'm just joking. I'm just <laughs> they're, joking. They're ones to forget, 60s, they're starting to forget <laughs> no, them. <laughs> it's going to be a family thing, yeah. because it's nothing, it's nothing to celebrate 60 years old, come on. <laughs> well, we're happy you made it, put it that way. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.